Okay, the jacket is coming off for this one. Welcome to this workshop video all about the science of happiness, aka my senior research paper. school to accompany the junior or in my case senior project everybody needs to write a research paper that relates to their topic and for the longest time I've thought that psychology and generally the science of happiness was intensely interesting so of course that's what I chose to write my seven page paper on I think it's really interesting and having this basic scientific knowledge is really beneficial to a happiness journey I want to share the totally abridged version with you guys and hopefully you find something interesting if I can figure out a way to link my paper I I definitely will if you want to read the whole thing. I think it's a very well written paper. I'll have like my work cited and all of that type of stuff too. For now, I'm just gonna go through some of the basic information that was in my paper. Time Magazine did a special edition all about happiness and a quote from that that I think is really interesting is that 40% of a person's ability to be happy is actually determined by behavior. So genetics I think is like 50%, 10% is circumstances, 40% of your happiness being controlled is controlled by you and the way you behave. I think that that's a really reassuring fact. Science typically when we're going into our happiness journey that we truly have the power to control our happiness. The thesis for my paper was happiness is vital to lasting health, but to achieve it, the brain must maintain a proper balance of neurotransmitters, specifically in its reward system and prefrontal cortex and hormones throughout the bloodstream. If there are any psychologists watching this video and I say a wrong fact, I'm really sorry. I've done a lot of research, but I'm not a psychologist. So first it might be important to figure out what is a neurotransmitter. So a neurotransmitter is a chemical that's inside your brain and it basically jumps between your neurons and it transmits information. Neurotransmitters help command and regulate a variety of bodily functions from breathing to digestion to weight and metabolism, all those different things, neurotransmitters help regulate and control them. Because neurotransmitters fuel things like breathing, it's very important to maintain a good balance to your health and therefore your happiness. There are two types of neurotransmitters, excitatory and inhibitory. Excitatory, as it sounds like, stimulate the brain, while inhibitory both works to calm the brain and to balance the ratio of excitatory neurotransmitters. Now, neurotransmitters and hormones are not to be confused with each other. Neurotransmitters Transmitters are little chemicals that work in your brain, while hormones are generated by specialized glands throughout your body and are emitted directly into the bloodstream. Hormones also regulate bodily activities like reproduction and metabolism. Hormones and neurotransmitters must balance, must all be present for your body to work the way it needs to work. In my research, I found two key areas of the brain that contribute to our happiness. The first is the reward system. This is a more ancient part of our brain. It's closer to the center and it's the one that has not changed changed as much with evolution. It's been there for a long time. And it was discovered in the 1950s when some psychologists injected electrodes into the brains of rats. And the rats had a lever that they could press that would inject these electrodes into this part of their brain and the part of their brain would light up. This area in particular, identified as the reward system a little bit later, was so enthralling that the rats would turn down everything. They wouldn't sleep, they wouldn't have sex, they wouldn't eat food, they just kept pressing the lever because it felt so good. Through more tests, Psychologists discovered that when this area of the brain is stimulated, dopamine floods. Dopamine you've probably heard before. It's an excitatory neurotransmitter and it's linked with motivation and with focus. When dopamine is flooded through your brain, the object of stimulation becomes so enticing that you will go to it at any cost. So dopamine floods when people are addicted to drugs or when you're in love, dopamine is very, very prominent. <laughs> in healthy doses, dopamine does wonders for goal setting, for focus, for pride of achievement, but too little dopamine is associated with self doubt and procrastination and lack of enthusiasm, which all sound like they're mortal enemies to happiness. Dopamine can be balanced by eating starchy things and fish and lots of vitamin B6. The next important happiness part of the brain is the prefrontal cortex. Studies have shown that damage to the left side of the prefrontal cortex is associated with negative mood, while damage to the right side has shown positive effects on people's general mood. In other words, the left side is responsible for optimism and happiness, while the right side is responsible for negativity. So naturally, we want the left prefrontal cortex to be in good condition if we are going to eventually try and be happy. Dopamine is also very present in the prefrontal cortex, but another important neurotransmitter is serotonin. I'm gonna show you this little image here about dopamine and serotonin pathways in the brain. Ooh, ooh. As the picture says, serotonin is responsible for things like your mood, your memory processing, and your sleep. So those are all important things if you wanna be happy.
happy. Serotonin is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, which means, like I said before, it helps to balance excitatory neurotransmitters like dopamine. So you need a balance of both in order to fully be a centered, calm person. Along with balancing out your brain, serotonin is also responsible for a couple of other important things, including digestion, the immune system, pain tolerance, and cravings for carbohydrates. You can increase serotonin levels through the same things as dopamine, like vitamin B6. And protein also. Endorphins are a hormone that are important. Endorphins are your body's natural painkiller, and that goes for psychological pain and physical pain. When you feel sad or anxious, endorphins are your body's natural way of muting those feelings and helping you feel happier. I'm sure you've heard that exercise is a great way to increase your endorphins, but so is laughing. <laughs> No, but really, laughter increases endorphins. Go have a good laugh. Watch a funny YouTube video or something. Also, the antioxidants in dark chocolate help to increase endorphins, although it says as little as two to three squares a week is enough, but if you have a couple more, like maybe if you eat a bar of chocolate, I, th I think that you'll be all right. One thing that I found really interesting was that eating spicy foods, and specifically peppers, also triggers an immense endorphin release. And that's because the components in peppers latch onto your nerve endings on your tongue, and your body goes, oh my God, we're dying, and it sends so many endorphins to your mouth that it just gets generated throughout your whole body. So endorphins help to keep your physical pain tolerance at bay as well as negative emotions. At the same time, Magazine Edition said that happy people are less likely to contract sickness, experience chronic pain, suffer from obesity, and they even have a 22% lower risk of coronary heart disease. Happy people reap tons of health benefits, and healthy people reap tons of happiness benefits. So if you feel happy, hopefully your health will be better. And if you feel healthy, your happiness should increase. Ah! So I ended my paper with two different quotes, and they're kind of related to each other. From the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are three of the things that our founding fathers said are in our fundamental rights. The pursuit of happiness is in there, and I think that's so interesting that, what, over 200 years ago, our founding fathers identified happiness as something that we have a right to and that we should be striving for. And then, here, let me read you the last sentence of my paper to conclude this beautiful video. As Thomas Jefferson brilliantly argues in the powerful musical Hamilton, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fought for these ideals. We shouldn't settle for less. If anybody just said these are wise words, thank you for listening to Hamilton. I know that was a ton of information, and if you go read my paper, there's more information, and it's probably articulated a little bit better since, you know, I had lots of drafts to edit my wording, but there's some information about the science of happiness. Hopefully I didn't overload you too much. This clip says it's 17 minutes long, so I really hope that I can cut it down so I don't totally overwhelm you. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We fought for these ideals. We shouldn't settle for less. Don't settle for less. Fight for your happiness and do something that makes you happy today. Please continue enjoying my happiness workshop, and I'll see you in my next video. Okay, bye!